The Nigerian equities market has witnessed some level of profit taking on key stocks following weak investor sentiment. Olamofe Matthew, an analyst at EDC Securities, joins me now for some market updates. Thank you so much for joining us today, uh, Olamofe, for your time on the show today. Let's start off the conversation with the yet-to-date uh, moderation we've seen so far. So we speak today is about 7.2%. Earlier on at the start of the week, was there about 8.3%? Uh, Okay, so the, the, the month to date, the year to date moderation we have seen thus far reflects the profit taking seen during the week, right? Um, if, you, if you observe closely, the market has been um, gaining significantly since the start of the week, as uh, the start of the year, and that's because investors have been positioning in stocks that um, they have convictions in and um, offer attractive dividend yields, particularly the banking names that we saw that uh, were a little bit subdued last year. I mean, you saw GT touched um, uh, 25, 26 levels, right? And then um, Zenit also created as something, some, some, some sort of a high level, right? But uh, thus far this week, we've seen a lot of investors profit take on some of those names. And then um, what actually weighed down market performance this week, we're profit taking in stocks like um, MTN, um, which um, gained significantly after they released their quarter results, which was very impressive. Um, likes of Gavigo as well, um, MTN, um, um, GT Bank, and GT Co and, uh, and Zenit. So profit taking in some of in, in these names, they are the major factor that actually weighed on market performance this week. Of course, markets closed negative um, since the start of the week, except for today that we saw some sort of positive performance. Yes, really. The bears are yet to really losing their grip on the market. But talking about sectorial performance now, as at midweek, we saw the insurance sector be the sole gainer, but still focusing on the banking sector, which still has relatively pulled some strong numbers. We have earnings reports still coming in. Stambic uh, uh, IBTC gross earnings up about 39.3%. Uh, Let's talk about the earnings and how things might likely shape up as we're also expecting the Q1 figures. Okay, so um, I, I think we, we have not really seen um, company releases really impact significantly on uh, market um, 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 performance. I mean, of course, investors anticipated for some of these releases, but, but um, following, if, if you notice, um, 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 during the releases of this result, we didn't really see so much of a spike. I mean, for Stamix result, it was, quite, it was very impressive. They were able to grow their non-interest um, revenue and their net interest income significantly. Uh, PBT was, was solid, it grew significantly as well, which was positive for them, particularly for the bank, is that they actually increased the loan creation, which was positive for them. Plus, I mean, they were able to benefit from um, more, more interest investments. Uh, but I mean, going forward, so for some of these um, names, so we think that um, what market is looking at is more of their Q1 earning releases, right? I mean, I think market has fully priced in um, the, uh, the expectations for full year releases and the our outlook is now on what Q1 2023 results would, would pan out to be like, which would likely shape market direction. Mm. Um, yes, I think mean, price was supportive of Stambix results, um, but I think going forward, we may probably see profit taking in that in that space, and should we not see some sort of an impressive performance in Q1 2023? But I mean, I, I, at the time like this, banks should actually gain in terms of um, the pricing of their loan, given the fact that the interest rate environment is quite high, and I mean the MPC looks likely to take another. Um, another another rate hike in the coming meeting, right? Given the fact that um, one we, we we still have um, um, challenges when it comes to um, the FX situation, and the global yields particularly is still is still very elevated, and the and the outlook is that it it may it may increase further going into the year. So just to match up with that, we probably will see a, a, a little bit of a, a little bit of hop or tick in the monetary policy, which will be favorable for some of these bank names that can price some of their instruments and get a, a more more revenue in, in, in regards to that. But I think what we likely moderate that will be more in terms of in, in funding costs. The cost of fund will actually, actually have to increase. And so uh, banks who have more retail exposure will stand to gain at a time like this, and banks who are more corporates and HNIs. Okay, now, Olam, I would still like to stay with the banks now. Looking at the cash crunch we earlier witnessed within the first quarter of this year, to what extent do you think this would impact their earning reports, especially for the fact that we also saw some surge in uh, e-payment channels. However, that was also challenged by erratic uh, movement. So really, transactions were not as voluminous. Yeah, so I, I think one, one of the issues banks may have to deal with at the time like this is that um, when, at, the, at the time when we saw a lot of um, this cash um, scarcity, we didn't really see deposits. You know, deposit is important to creating assets. 
for most of these banks. You know, they get deposits, they liquidate assets from these from these deposits. And because um, there are challenges regarding, I mean, the focus was more on getting cash. And I, I think that deposits, client deposits to banks will be likely impacted because of the cash situation, right? So it's, it's actually going to affect the ability to actually create assets. So we expect that that is really going to impact on their Q1 earnings. And that is why for Stambik, why we've seen that um, um, investive full year 2022 releases, I think that for Q1, it will be good for us to await what it's going to look like for the Q1 2022. Yeah. Because I think I expect that this cash situation would uh, negatively impact on some of this banking performance.